The Ocean Twilight Zone, or formally known as the Mesopelagic Zone, is 200 to 1000 meters below the sea surface. This makes it difficult to explore, but the more we investigate, the more we realize how little we know. Initially, it was thought that there were 1000 billion tons of fish, but thanks to the Malaspina project, it was discovered that they could actually be 10 times more, increasing the amount of fish to 10,000 billion tons. Fish found in the Mesopelagic zone are an essential part of the food chain, providing food for tunas, topus, squids, and many other fish we eat. While the exact magnitude is still unknown, they play an important role in climate change. Every night, they swim up to the surface to feed, and then swim back down, transporting a large amount of CO2. It is the largest almost unexploited ecosystem in the planet, and probably our last chance to do things right from the beginning. The depth and unique characteristics of the mesopelagic ecosystem, which is barely reached by light, have made it essential to combine several innovative technologies. Summer Projects is using four different methods that provide data to measure the number of fish. We are using acoustics, video, fishing and environmental eDNA. When using acoustics, we are listening to the echo of the fish, but there is problems because there is not only fish down there, there is other organisms that also produce echo, and we have to differentiate between them. So what we do then is to combine acoustics with different methods to check what we are seeing in the acoustics. One of the methods we use is to have video together with the acoustics. So we can see in the video what we are identifying the acoustic signal. And in that way we can analyze the acoustic signal and attribute it to different organisms. So in the future we can use only the acoustics because they are validated by the video. In addition to video, we use another method that is trolling. So this is very traditional trolling fishing uh, where we take nets and with those nets uh, we count and we identify what is in there. These fish usually are able to escape nets and this is why uh, we cannot only use nets, but we can again combine the fishing with nets, with trolls, to identify what we are seeing in the acoustics. Another method we use is the egg production method. This is a complex method, but basically what we do is to count the number of fish eggs in the water. We take those eggs with plankton nets, and then we estimate how many eggs is produced by each fish. And then by doing a division, we know the estimate number of fish that there are in the water. The method is more complicated than that. We need to know the fecundity of the fish, the mortality, etc. But basically, what we need to do is to have an idea of the number of eggs in the water. Environmental DNA is the DNA collected from the environment, for example, seawater. Seawater samples contain male organisms such as bacteria and phytoplankton, but also traces of larger organisms in forms of cell, tissues, scales released by fish. By filtering several liters of seawater, these traces can be collected to analyze their DNA and examine which species inhabit a specific area. We have found that environmental DNA is distributed in vertical layers, which is very important for the study of the deep ocean. By analyzing the DNA of water from various depths, from the surface to more than 1,000 meter depth, we see that the DNA is stratified and that this stratification is also different during the day and during the night. This means that the DNA of some species is present in shallower layers at night and in deeper layers during the day, which coincides perfectly with the known vertical migration movements of some species in the mesopelagic zone and gives us information about the spatial and temporal distribution of these species. So far, we have managed to define what methods and techniques will be needed to estimate fish biomass. Now we have to agree between different institutes on a protocol and apply it in a coordinated way in different parts of the world. In other words, we need to get out to the sea to implement the techniques we are developing. 
In addition to the summer project, we work closely with the MESO project. We are also in contact with other projects around the world through Yetson. This is a program within the United Nations Decade of the Oceans which acts as the international coordinator and focal point for the Twilight Zone studies.